Where do you live? With Colossus. Own a rent. Spoon. Why the mask? It's ugly. Why the jokes? Insecure. Why Princess Bride? I'm a fan. Why Celine Dion? I'm a bigger fan. Why the holidays? Thought it'd be fun. Why PG-13? It's a family movie. Also money. Also Disney. Why do you think audiences will be stupid enough to swallow this? Not sure this level of curiosity is cute coming from a middle-aged man strapped to a bed against his will. What on timey? Not on your f***ing life. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. Happy holidays. This is going to be my Once Upon a Deadpool post credit scene video for the new post credit scenes that they added. They made some significant changes to the original post credit scenes from Deadpool 2 and then added a whole bunch of new ones. And then I'll do a bit of a review at the end of the video. Since it's the holidays, we'll also do a new round of that IMAX ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite Deadpool moment on the video. So like I said, they start out with the original Deadpool 2 post credit scenes with a couple really big changes. So he still takes Cable's time travel device from Nagasonic Teenage Warhead and Yukio in the mid credits scene. So the mid credits, post credits, mid credits come right after all the crayon drawing credits. He goes back in time to save Vanessa, this time with some of the blood and guts digitally removed when he takes out Vanessa's would-be killer with the kitchen utensil. Then they added a new mid credit scene with Fred Savage, like their Princess Bride scenes that they shot for this cut of the movie. They talk about how much they love post credit scenes, about how their private little talks with the filmmakers. They foreshadow a little bit about how Deadpool will be a proper Marvel character soon. They make more Marvel Fox jokes. And Fred Savage starts calling him on a lot of bullshit that he saw during the film. And he makes fun of the fact that they made a PG-13 cut of Deadpool in the first place double dipping because they just released two separate cuts of the film. Kind of prefer Marvel movies. We are Marvel. Yeah, but you know, you're Marvel licensed by Fox. It's like if the Beatles were produced by Nickelback. It's music, but it sucks. Okay, that's it. I'm done. I've had it with all this Nickelback hating, right? You think that makes you cool with the cool kids in school, Fred? No, it just it, makes me right. It doesn't. They're overproduced, formulaic, ear garbage. They also use Fred Savage to acknowledge some of people's biggest complaints about Deadpool 2 after the movie came out in theaters earlier this year. They subtly remind people that there will be more post credit scenes after the black and white credits because I assume that a lot of young families went to see this so like little kids would probably get up and leave. They wouldn't stick around for the credits unless you told them to. They play the regular black and white credits and then you go into the actual post credits from the original Deadpool 2 film albeit cut down in the same way that they cut down the Vanessa scene. So you get a version of that Deadpool Wolverine origins scene with Hugh Jackman except they just cut down the scene where Deadpool is killing the Wolverine origins version of Deadpool to be way less bloody. They do the exact same thing for the Green Lantern scene where Deadpool kills Ryan Reynolds before he can sign his contract except there's no blood splatter on the page. They didn't do the baby Hitler scene because that was from the Deadpool 2 super duper cut extended edition Blu-ray. Then they added a couple additional post credit scenes right at the end. So the last one is Fred Savage being freed by Deadpool like he unfurls the bed like you saw during the trailers with the duct tape around his legs. When he gets up you notice a couple things. One, his legs have atrophied like they want to make the joke that he's been trapped there for a long time so his legs are like little spindly skeleton legs. And when Deadpool kidnapped him and put him in the same shirt that he was wearing from Princess Bride he did not put any bottoms on him so they blur everything on Fred Savage from the waist down because he's buck ass naked. Then they break the fourth wall when Fred Savage looks around sees all the camera crew and they imply that the crew helped Deadpool kidnap him and put him in that bed. Then they go into a final Stan Lee special memorial post credit scene. We all wondered if they were going to do some special tribute. They totally did. It's actually a couple different things together. So you could say that there are even more post credit scenes. They have a couple funny moments of deleted scenes from Stan Lee's cameos. There was a Green Lantern joke where he says that Deadpool is supposed to be wearing a green suit. They do a photo montage of Stan Lee's work throughout the years at Marvel Comics and then they have an actual scene with Stan Lee being interviewed by someone who's asking him how he wants to be remembered by people when he's gone. That started it so I dreamed up Spider-Man and the Hulk and the X-Men and all the others. What I tried to do was take these characters who are obviously bigger than life and fictitious and make them seem real. They've got these powers, they do wonderful things, but what are, what are the things that worry them? What are the things that frustrate them? I tried to write a well-rounded character with every character I did rather than just somebody who 
uh, is extra strong and can beat up the bad guys. What would you like people to be left with from your career? He wrote some good stories. I don't think about that much. You know, when I'm gone, I really don't care. Um, it doesn't do you any good when you're gone. Stan Lee replies, I hope they say he wrote some good stories. And then they sort of end on that moment. So it's less of a, a funny moment and more of just an honest memorial to Stan Lee. So it is really nice. Hopefully at some point they'll post that online. I don't know if they have plans to make an actual Blu-ray cut, like a separate cut of the film of this Once Upon a Deadpool or what they're going to do with the additional material they shot. In terms of my actual review of the film, I'm not quite as harsh on it as some of the other reviewers that I've seen because it's definitely a double dip. Like I said, if you saw Deadpool 2 or if you already own the Blu-ray of the super duper cut with all the extra material in it, there's not really a compelling reason for you to spend an extra $15 or $20 or whatever it does cost where you live to actually go to the theater to see movies. It was fun seeing them do all the Fred Savage stuff. He was definitely a champ and they did write some good material. There were some reports that they shot most of these scenes with him in less than a week. Like I've seen varying reports of how long they actually spent doing this new stuff but it just didn't feel quite big enough for a theatrical release. Like this felt like something that they would do for cable. Like if it was on a major network, like, oh, we can't show Deadpool being quite as graphic. So we got to find a funny way to make it entertaining. Then you do something like this. I don't think audiences will be quite as forgiving in the future if they continue to do this multiple cut situation. Like obviously we all expect an extended cut on Blu-ray. Like that's always nice. Just cram some extra deleted scenes in there. But when you're talking about theatrical release, like either just release one cut of the film or the other, like, is it going to be PG-13? Is it going to be R? Just pick one, go with it. Then maybe just add a whole bunch of material on the Blu-ray when you release that. So I give them an A for intentions, but like a B, maybe B minus for execution. But like Deadpool jokes, one of the reasons why they did this PG-13 cut, like in addition to raising money for a charity and doing something nice for families is just like a brief stunt. They also did it a little bit because of the upcoming deal with Disney and a lot of people are just wondering what's going to happen with the Deadpool franchise when they're underneath Disney. Will it be the same Deadpool? Will they make them go PG-13? The CEO of Disney said that they were really excited about the Deadpool franchise, but he didn't give many specifics, so I'll believe it when I see it. So if they say that they're not going to do anything with Deadpool to completely change the character, that's great. They're getting ready to start making the next Deadpool movie, so we'll find out pretty quickly. I do think that they can make a good Deadpool PG-13 movie, but here's the really important thing. They have to start out planning it that way. They can't make an R-rated film and then just cut it down to a PG-13 film. Fuck you up. That's not the same thing. Like Ryan Reynolds is good at what he does. They can find good writers to make a funny movie in a way that parodies a lot of the tropes of Marvel films. They'll have all the MCU characters to work with so they can tear Iron Man and the Avengers a new one. They can have a lot of fun with that, but they just have to plan it to be that way from the start. So whatever they're going to do, I just hope that they figure it out and it'd be nice if they told us. Sometimes you don't find out till the end of the game. Like we thought that Venom was going to be rated R. They said that they were trying to make a rated R film, then later doubled down and said, no, 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 we always planned on doing PG-13, when very clearly that is not the case. So if you had a chance to see Once Upon a Deadpool in theaters, let me know what you thought about it and the idea of a PG-13 Deadpool movie. So I'll name a new giveaway winner when I post new Marvel. Click here for my Aquaman post credit scene video and click here for that new Captain Marvel Avengers Endgame clip. Thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays, everyone. I'll see you guys tonight.